Hello, hello, hello. Good evening. Welcome to Sunday Night Satsang with myself, John Homewood. And Michelle McLeanan. If you don't know by now. I think you probably know by now. <laughs> yeah, good evening and welcome. Welcome. I trust you've had a beautiful day today, a restful day. We had a lot of rain yesterday and today is sort of been one of those in-between days. Mm, it's been not, quite not raining day. but not sunny, hey? Mm, quite rainy, kind of sort of misty, <clears throat> yeah, foggy yeah, day. Between day, yeah. Mm. But we did have a lot of rain and we're really grateful for that. We really are. So how has your weekend been? Uh, let us know in the comments box. We like to know who we are talking to and where you are watching from. And if this is the first time you are joining us for Satsang, well, welcome. Welcome. Yeah. Hi Claire, we see you here. Yes. Please let us know where you are and who you are. So yeah. that we How's it in Zim? Say hi. Yeah. Have you had also had some rain there? Mm. We've had Hopefully. a lot of rain here. Yeah, a lot of rain here. Mm. Yeah. Just wait for a few more people to join, shall we? Mm. Yeah. And um, as always, if you enjoy what we have to share, if you can press the like and the and the share button, it definitely does help it get out there. We're convinced that uh, the, there's a sort of handbrake being put on these satsangs in that these uh, kinds of things, yeah. They don't seem, seem like to they get. Don't seem to get up. They don't get that organic growth no. that uh, they used to. Mm. Yeah. yeah, they used to get more yeah. in the earlier days. In the earlier days, yes. Plenty, plenty rain and zim, lovely. Ah, good, excellent. That's, awesome. Awesome That's very pleasing. Yeah, you know, when you go without rain for a while, you really, <laughs> you really are in awe of the blessing that rain is to 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 the earth and to us. Who live on the earth? Yeah. Living in a, we we're living now, and the only rain source really is rain. The only rain source in is rain. In terms of, I mean, huh? yeah, the only water source is rain. Only water source. And so we're really conscious of it. It's amazing how it changes your relationship with water. And it rain. does. Yeah. You, you're really grateful every single time it rains. Yeah. Because it fills up the the tanks. Yeah, we're on a farm, and there's no, no other source no of water. No water. river. No municipal. No mm -hmm. dam water. It's just rain water. Yeah. So we really yeah. notice it. Hello yeah. Shelley, good to hello. have you with us. Hello Shelley, hi, hi, hi. Yeah. Yes, and um, as we said, hello Diane. And as we said in the in the blurb for tonight, we are, this um, can or may very well be our last Facebook uh, satsang. Mm -hmm. We're looking at, uh, at reformatting what we do online. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so, Facebook, I mean, it's been pretty good to us over the last three years, but more and more people are not on Facebook anymore and they don't really actively use Facebook. Mm. So we're looking at, A, changing our format of, of how we present the satsangs and secondly, on what media we put it out on. And we may switch over to, to YouTube. But uh, this is very much your satsang as well as, as it is our satsang. So we would really value your input on that. Yeah. Um, so at the moment we, we, we have satsang for an hour, which we have heard from some people. They say an hour is much too long, you know, they've only got a five minute attention span. Well, I don't think we can do satsang for five minutes, but maybe, maybe we could cut it down to half an hour. Mm -hmm. um, and just let us know which part of the satsang is valuable to you, because we normally have like three, four six sections. We have the opening centering meditation and then Michelle normally introduces a, mm -hmm. sort of a bit of astrology and then we have a theme for for the week which we look at and then we have a closing visualization so we just mm -hmm. like to know from you what is beneficial for you is any of it beneficial to you yeah. and if it is just let us know and let us know any changes or improvements that you feel you would like to see um, the time slot is another one that we could look at so at the moment it's obviously half past seven and till half past eight but maybe, you know, we can do it from eight until half past eight and just make it half an hour. But just let us know what you think. You know, we, this is your, 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 um, yeah. your satsang and as much as it's mm -hmm. ours and we'd like your contribution. If you can. And also, if, you know, if the themes are relevant, if the themes are something that pulls you to this, draws you to the satsang, or if you'd prefer just to be a, a gathering, and you know, a, 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 a time where we can get together and go quiet and go into presence and kind of realign for the week ahead. Um, you know, we come up with a sort of a theme for each week, but it's not necessary that that has to be the case. So, due to this year being a year of big change, as we've been saying, 
it's a time where we actually are all saying, okay, what works, what doesn't work, what can, what can we adjust, how can we adjust it to the benefit of all, um, where's the value, is there no value, is there value? So that's what we're really doing with all of our online offerings. We're just looking at everything from a fresh, new perspective and saying, okay, where do we need to shift and change and if, grow? If we do if we need, need to, to change. Yeah. Yeah. So we need your feedback as to what you would like. Yeah. So thank you for the comments. I've been watching a few of them there. Um, that's excellent. And just let us know. We need you know, a, a group discussion here. So if you can all... Uh, just give your contribution that that's really really great and we will listen and we will let you know um how we're going to move forward uh with this and that's, yeah oh, that's a good idea claire maybe a, an online poll i think you can do it on facebook i have no Somehow, idea how to yeah. but we can find out yeah yeah so we, we're really asking you as our community to to contribute here in terms yeah. of what do you enjoy what don't you enjoy what's useful yeah. what isn't useful would yeah. you show up even if there wasn't a theme would you be here Mm. Is it the theme that pulls you, or is it just the, the community, um, us sharing with you, um, us gathering? What is it that brings you here? Yeah. I think that's what we really want to know. Yeah. So that we can, yeah, we can grow the community and we can get more light out into the world. That's really yeah. the main yeah. Uh, focus. Yeah, we find that this type of, you know, the, the words, for example, journey, um, journeys of awakening, and, 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 and we talk a little bit about freedom, are words that seem to be pretty much strangled by uh, the social media platforms. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're not words that, that get a lot of promotion, a lot of traction. So, if we could ask you to 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 press the like and the share button and the comments help as well, and we love getting your hearts. Obviously, we do. So, all of those help increase the the, the reach of of these satsangs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so Good. You can contribute there. Great. All right. So let's. Thank start this know. evening with doing uh, the none doing <laughs> which is the centering the centering in the present moment so just settle back and thank you for the hearts thank you for the hearts and thank you for the comments thank you All right just gently settle back and you might like to close your eyes and say you don't have to you can have a candle that you can focus on which is always beautiful but um, I like to close my eyes and just center my my awareness inwards and become aware of the physical body. Closing the eyes heightens the other senses of the body, like the sense of touch and feeling. And closing our eyes, we become more, more aware of, for example, the chair we're sitting on. Becoming aware of even the temperature of the room on our cheeks. Becoming aware of everything we can hear in this moment. These are portals. Portals out of the mind made me. The mind made story. The mind made matrix. Into something more real, more eternal. And the word I'm going to use for that, which is more real than the story in our head, a four letter word a word called life because right now in this moment you can feel your own aliveness you can feel the the life as animating your fingers your toes the life that is beating our hearts the life that enables us to listen to hear right now that's not a function of our thinking mind in fact, when our mind goes quiet, very, very quiet and still, we hear even better. When we're able to slow the thoughts down and enter the space between our thoughts, we become more aware of the aliveness in the body. The sensations of touch get heightened. This is our direct connection with this intelligence that transcends time, physical form. It inhabits the physical form, but it transcends the physical form. The formless. Life is formless, dancing with 
the playoff form. Let me now become aware of another beautiful portal into stillness, into the direct connection with life, and that's to become aware of the gift of life, which is the breath, the breath of life. And take a very deep breath in, drawing the air right the way down as if it's going into your toes, drawing it right the way down the body, and then just take a very long, relaxing sigh out, and just release any troubles, any concerns that you have been holding. Just let it go with the out breath. Take another fresh in breath. Take it with gratitude for this beautiful gift of the breath. Take it deep into the body and then just breathe out all that no longer serves you in this moment. Just let it go. You don't need it right now. Take a third very deep breath in, blowing your tummy up like a big ball, drawing the diaphragm down, drawing the air into your body. And then make the out breath twice as long now as the in breath. Really release all that no longer serves you in this moment. And as you breathe out, just drop your awareness deeper into presence, into alignment with life, one with life. And become aware of the stillness <clears throat> that is presence. We have a word called presence and we have a word called stillness and we have a word called life. And yet they're all pointing towards the same nothingness. Stillness is not a thing. Life is not a thing. Presence is not a thing. Yes, they, they flow into form, but they're not form themselves. They animate form. They enliven form. But they transcend form. They hear before form. The here after form. And another word that we can ponder in this moment and bring into our awareness is the word being. Being. Being as one with life. Being as one with presence. Being a stillness. When you're just being, there's a stillness within you that you become aligned with. You become merged into and you can't go and find or seek or understand being or life or stillness or presence they're not to be found or understood they're just to be realized they're to be stepped back into alignment with and the only thing that ever can be out of alignment with it is our attention we focus on that which is outside of being that which is outside of alignment with presence and when we do we suffer we suffer stress and worry and anxiety and disconnection and when we breathe out and we release the need for anything other than what is, we realign ourselves with life. We lean into life. The life that we are. And it's beautiful. It's sacred divine. It is healing and it is abundant. And we are so blessed to be here tonight and to be merged in the sense of oneness with all life. The most sacred place in all of creation is here and now. Everything that you have sought in the deepest recesses of your heart is to be found in the stillness of presence. And presence yearns 
for our acceptance, for our attention, for our homecoming. Now we take another very deep breath in, beautiful deep breath in, and a long breath out. And giving thanks just for this moment, we gently open our eyes, noticing how we feel in this moment. Just after a few minutes of centering ourselves back into alignment with life, we find ourselves more peaceful, more still, more quiet, more alive, and definitely, definitely more heart-centered. So let us know how that was for you. Hi everybody that joined during that. Thanks Hello everyone. Comments. Yeah. It's beautiful. If you missed it in the beginning, we're basically just saying that we we might be changing the format of this, but you can go back to the beginning and watch. We won't repeat ourselves. So if you have any suggestions for future uh, satsangs, then we're very open to what your requirements are, because you're our community. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you for the hearts. Thanks, yeah. Alex. Thank you. Okay, so tonight we're going to talk about um, leaning into life. Leaning into life. That's a strange yeah. topic. Yes. Guess you chose it. Why? <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's quite tricky to come up with a different subject every week. I must just tell you. Leading into life is good. I like yeah. it. But what what I was sort of how how that came to be there was that it seems that there are and will be many twists and turns this li this 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 life, but this year and for the next couple of years, I think that maybe some of us have seen that already I know you know somebody that I know fell and broke her arm and sprained her other one um, there's a lot of change that's happened already this year for people where they've thought okay this is what I'm going to do and no you're not going to do that you're going to do that so it seems like it, it just I got the image of twists and turns in a road you know those roads that twist and turn all the way through and if we resist the the changes you know, you can basically go plowing straight ahead. So you need to, if you're on a bike or if you're on a bicycle, if there's a if there's a corner and a curve, you need to actually move into it. You need to lean into the change, into the curve, into the, um, yeah, into those twists and turns to actually lean into it rather than resist it. Because a lot of the time we resist it and say, why has this happened? It shouldn't have happened. And that's kind of going straight when the road's curving. So I just see that this is what's that? Oops, glasses need to be for you. <laughs> so funny, Helen. Um, yeah, I just see this as a time, especially you know, energetically and um, astrologically, a time we'll be looking at everything and we're saying, okay, what works, what doesn't work, what are our patterns, what are our our, our belief systems. What are the things we repeat on a daily basis? Um, are they still serving us? Is the way we're doing things still serving us? So we're following that wisdom and that guidance and saying, yeah, what does work? Yeah, so leaning into life, yeah. leaning into life. Yeah. Um, instead of resisting life, fighting life, mm. trying to direct life, rather listen to the quiet stillness and allow life to guide us. Last night we watched a very old film called August Rush. Mm. August Rush. It's one of my favorite ever. Yeah, and uh, it was weird because we had some friends staying with us uh, for a couple of days and uh, we were in the car and we were just uh, discussing what's our favorite movies and Michelle just came out with this August Rush. Mm. And funny enough, I had um, that film, that very film, out on um, on a bureau just sitting there um, which I had pulled out a few days earlier which Michelle hadn't seen mm -hmm. and it's also um, one of my favorite films so we sat and we pulled it out and we watched it last night yeah, if you haven't watched it and August Rush is about a little orphan boy who is able to be still enough to listen to the flow of music in life in the wind in everything around him 
and he then he has a genius for for composition for composing music and it, it's a beautiful little love story um but That's it's based on, a, on on leaning into life allowing life to lead you instead of resisting instead of always trying to direct life become the directed by life look if someone's talking to you and they they're speaking quite softly you need to lean in and leaning in is kind of a i'm here i'm listening i'm mm. i'm present i'm here i'm i'm hearing you i'm seeing you leaning in and so it was just so obvious that movie it was so mm. beautiful that they it was it's a lovely story we won't tell you the whole story in case you be, in case you watch it but um it was about it was sort of like about the harmonics converging it was almost you know if you're listening and you 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 sort of have an intention then you're going to be drawing things situations people different those kind of things that harmonize with that intention into your awareness and if you're resisting life then you're going to be drawing that into your awareness is resistance and separation so it's kind of how can we lean in further how can we lean in to life how can we lean into ourselves into uh, it's like a gentleness it's an interest it's a you know we all love to talk and we all love to share our stories but we don't like to share a story with someone that's leaning back with their arms folded you know we we want to share our story with someone who's engaged and who's looking at us and who's who's present. who's present mm. who's who's able to respond if if there, if there's a response needed so it's it's full presence to actually be to be able to be to lean in yeah and if you're leaning in then you're leaning into life which means for me that you're tuning in. If you go back to the the sound thing and the music thing, you're tuning into that frequency. Mm. And and Robin Williams is in the film, and and he mm. he makes a point of saying that uh, this music is there for everyone, but very few are prepared to listen. Very few are prepared to be quiet enough inside to listen to the music of life, to what life is. Is guiding or communicating to us and life doesn't speak to us in words it guides us in a far more subtle sense a sense of inner knowing of quietness of yesness and you have to lean into that to truly hear what life is saying to us and most people are making far too much noise in their head and they're far too focused on the past and on the future to hear what life presence is actually whispering in this very moment here and now and i think a lot of the time we ask for guidance and then we just carry on with the noise in our head and we don't listen to the guidance um and you've got to be still to get guidance and very often guidance can come over and over and over and if you're not listening you're not going to hear it and then when you hear when you when you consider afterwards you think yeah but you know this person said that and this person said this and this person said that all said the same thing we asked for guidance there's been guidance along the way but have we been listening so it's leaning in it's listening it's and it's leaning into the flow of life as well as the changes because we can't stop the change this change is happening this shift is happening and I think that the things that we may have thought we wanted might not happen the way we thought they wanted this year. So this is what I'm picking up from people and from my own life. It's, ah, okay, that's not going to happen the way we thought. Okay, so you've got to lean into this change now. How do we, how do we go with this change um, without driving over the cliff? Yeah, that old um, saying, you know, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. <laughs> And it's going to become more and more obvious that life, the divine, whatever you want to call it, has plans far bigger than the egoic mind, than the thinking mind. And if you really want to listen to life, one has to step out of mind. It's not the mind that is able to listen to, to life. Um, the mind is, is almost anti-life to a certain respect because every single thought we think takes us away from the stillness every thought we think is a movement away from presence mm. so the thinking process isn't going to hear mm. the still whisper that life has 
Only your presence, only your being, beingness, is able to hear life. Hence, leaning into, into life. And, you know, we, we've already alluded to it in what we've said already, but what is this life that we are speaking about? A lot of people, most people, myself included in my old um, part of my life, believed that life was something that I had. It was also something that I had to improve. Mm. And I had to work very hard at improving this thing called life. And at the same time, I was always in danger of losing this thing called life. Someone could take it from me. And one of the biggest realizations of my life mm. is to realize that I'm not separate from life. There's not life and me. That's the, the dualistic way of seeing reality. But there is the non-dual. The non-dual is when you come back to your true essence, which is life, which is being, which is presence, and realize there's no separation. You and life are one. You, in fact, are life. This intelligence that we're speaking of tonight that is there to guide us through all this change is the real essence of you. And what is it guiding though? It's guiding that essence of you that split off from alignment and is out of alignment. Mm. And our, our journey, which is going to say, take us very safely through all these changes, is just a realignment with reality, with presence, with your true essence. This is a journey back to a place that you never left. It's a journey without distance. And it's a remembering who and what we really are. And only when we still our mind can we truly experience directly, not through understanding, not through a conceptual knowledge, but through direct experience who and what we are. We, beyond our names, beyond our achievements, beyond our failures, beyond our hopes and beyond our dreams, there is this essence of life of presence, of being, and it's to honor that with our listening, with our attention, with our full beingness. Mm -hmm. That is leaning into life. Mm -hmm. I loved what you said there about the remembering, because if you look at the word remember, it's remember. So it means that there are different parts, <sighs> and there's a separation that's happened. And remembering is bringing those different parts together. So it's, it's basically just remembering that we are whole and complete. We are life. We're not these separate, limited, um, weak people only. Um, we, have, we have life th coursing through our, our beings all the time. It's just tuning into that. And that, just that, that motion of actually bringing it all together is wholeness. That's who we really are. And that's, then you've remembered who you are. You've actually brought the disparate parts of yourself, which is the mind, which says, yeah, but there's this, and that happened when you were two, and then what happens when you're 85? And that's the, the, the dismembership. That's, that's where we split apart. So it's bringing it back together. And you can only do that here. You can only do that now. You can only do that in this moment. You can't do it tomorrow. You can't do it next week. And if, as long as you, as, as 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 busy as your mind is, that's going to take you further away from it, which is probably why most of you are here, because this is a chance for us to all be together in the moment. That's what we're doing here. We're not doing anything actually. We're just being here together. Um, the mind will usually say no, but what's there at the end of it? You know, we always trying to see where, where we're going, where's it going to end, what's the outcome going to be. And this is, this is not this process. So this is an opening to this, and it's a leaning into this. It's leaning into life, it's saying, okay, I'm fully present with life. And okay, so life's taking a turn that I didn't expect. Okay, can I lean into this turn and see what's here? And like this little guy, August Rush, listen. Listen carefully to what's, what's here now. Because he would never have been able to hear that if he hadn't had the presence. 
because everybody else was telling him that he was mad. He would he was crazy, and he was he had such a strong um, what was it conviction that what he knew to be true was true that he never ever let that go, and that led him to the next thing and the next thing. It's a magical mm, it story is. and movie, and f- so full yeah. of meaning. August Rush is a little yeah. orphan boy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 incredible. And just to say that you can't lean into life tomorrow. You can't lean into life yesterday. You can only le- lean into life now. You can only listen to life now. You can't listen yesterday and you can't listen tomorrow. You can only listen now, right here, right now in this moment. But it's like when you're driving on a road and there's a big bend coming up. You can't think, well, I'm going to take the bend just now. It's like I'm taking it now. I'm turning now. I'm leaning into that turn now so that I'm actually going with it. I'm going with the road. I'm going through with, with the road of life. I'm not going to try and go, the, go off and branch off that road. So it's, it's just to see what life's presenting all of us at this time. Because if these shifts happening and changes happening, then they need to happen. Because they are. are. Because Because they they are. are. Because they are. And when you start to trust the intelligence Mm. of life, you know that what is happening is meant to be here. And there's a higher purpose for this in this moment. And remember, I said earlier about uh, the misperceptions of life, and the one which I spoke briefly about is the perception that I have it and I can lose it. And that is completely not true. That's the dualistic way of seeing it, that I and my and life mm. are separate. And that's, that's one misperception that I believe uh, needs to be healed at this time. And the other misperception, which I mentioned briefly, was that I must improve my life. The purpose of coming to, to the earth is to improve my life. Well, if you don't have a life, you can hardly improve it if you are life. And if life and stillness are one, you can't improve stillness. Stillness is always still. It's perfect. You can't get more stillness. It's just stillness. And stillness, life, being, presence, and the I amness, who you really are, is all one and the same. They're different signposts, Mm -hmm. but they're all pointing us back to the same place that is a no place. They're always pointing us back to the thing that we are that is a no thingness. You don't have a life. You are life. And the life that you are cannot be improved. Now take a deep breath in. Just all of you take a very deep breath in. And as you breathe out, just say, I am enough in this moment. And just see what a relief it is. I am. The I am is enough in this moment. Letting go of the need to strive for something other than what is already here relieves us of stress. It doesn't mean that we stop doing in the world. We can become more, inf- more effective doers if we take into our doingness this stillness, this essence of life, this essence of being in, its, uh, in the awareness of the fullness of this life. And it doesn't mean that we, that we lose the ability to co-create the physical circumstances mm-hmm. that we find ourselves. It's very important at this time to reawaken the power that we have within us. We've, we've spoken many times about this power that we have within us to co-create physical circumstances. But do not look for physical circumstance to change so that you can find life, so that you can find peace, so that you can find joy or love. Rather find it here in this moment. Find the stillness now. Don't wait for the neighbor's dog to stop barking so that you can find stillness. It's underneath the barking is the stillness. Don't wait for situations and circumstance to change so that you can find the joy. The joy is already here. Underneath the situations and circumstances that you find yourself in. Stop the seeking, the looking, the needing, the searching. Stop and find what is already here. That's leaning into life. It's leaning into presence, leading into, leaning into beingness. Call off the search 
and you'll find that what you have really been searching for is already here just hidden from your awareness by the preferential dualistic seeking mind yeah, a lot of the time you know when you ask somebody who are you and what do you want ask yourself that what do you want what do you really want and very often you'll find that you'll say things like I want more abundant money wise or I want a home or I want a partner or I want a new job or okay so assuming that you find that how would you feel in that moment as you okay I've realized the dream I've got the house I've got the partner I've got the whatever it is okay how do you feel and that's that's what you're actually after so then if you're holding that as your vibration as your frequency it matters not whether you actually get the house the car the job the dog it doesn't matter because you already have it you already have that feeling you already have the feeling and that's mm. the feeling is what motivates us to go and achieve what we need to achieve you just look at it there's always a feeling i want to go on holiday because why how will you feel on holiday? I want to feel relaxed. Exactly. So there it is. So you want to feel relaxed. So that's what you need to hold within your energy field. And that is what we're realizing now at this time in our consciousness, in our history, in our evolution, is we are realizing the power of that. Slowly, because this has been, it's been very mind-oriented and very, as John would say, ver um, horizontal plane-oriented. From day one, we are conditioned to, to say, where are you going? How are you going to get there? What are you doing for a living? What's your five-year plan? What's your 10-year plan? Have you got enough money in the bank? We're conditioned to see that as success and happiness. I'll be happy when. I'll be able to relax when. Okay, so how's that working? It doesn't work because when's never going to happen. It can't happen. <laughs> it's an illusion. There is no when. There is no tomorrow. There is no next year. So what vibration? What do you want? And I think for me, that this, goes, this goes beyond just our physical, personal, um, our you know, individual wants. It's, we're, it's, we're at a tipping point in our humanity. What do you want for humanity? What do you want for your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, even if you're not going to be around? What do you want? What, do you, what kind of life do you want from them, for them? Do you want them to be free? Do you want them to live, in, live on a planet that's got fresh air and beautiful flowing water and forests and community and nature? And Do you want that? What else do you want? How? Why? You know, so those are the questions that we're asking because that's good. We, we are crafting our future reality for, for generations to come now in this moment we are we are co-creating from where we're at yeah we spoke about frequency yeah. we co-creating with frequency, frequency. that's yeah. what we co-create mm -hmm. and the world that we currently experience is a function of our past frequency of our past thoughts of our past feelings the world we experiencing now is a co-creation of the group mind of the group energy that we put out and if we would like to experience a world that Michelle described there for our, our children and our grandchildren a world of cooperation and caring and and connection with with the real um, essence of life and nature then let's start being it now let's start creating that let's lean into that future feeling now and end the waiting end the searching for other situations outside of ourselves we've been programmed to be disconnected from the power within us we have been taught that the power is outside us it's in our teachers it's in our religious leaders it's in our politicians it's in the armies no it isn't the real power is within us the power of feeling and if it is peace and if it is joy and if it is love and if it is connection that you want feel it feel it now and how do we do that we lean into life. We lean into the, the fullness of life in this moment through acceptance. 
and embracing the knowledge of the intelligence of life that beats your heart, that enables you to see and to walk and to hold and to speak. You don't know how to do any of those things. That's an intelligence within you called life. And when you trust that and you lean into that, you will be guided to the next doing this and the next doing this. It will come through you instead of you reaching for it on the outside. And life will cease to be a struggle and will become a joyful flowing dance of abundance. That, that's the true nature of what life is meant to be. We've been programmed with this scarcity consciousness and that's nonsense. The true nature of life, which is who you are, is abundant. Life is abundant. Mm -hmm. And it's only the mind that separates us from that knowingness and from trusting that information, that, that true fullness of life. Mm. Yeah, I just see Jan's uh, comment there, you know, recognizing my striving is stopping me from being truly present. What I would like to suggest is that true presence is true presence. So if you're truly present, if any of us are truly, truly present, there is no striving. It's the opposite way around mm. for me. Mm. If you're present, there is no striving. Mm. If you're striving, it means that you're not present. That's mm. all. That's all. There's no judgment. It's just mm. I'm not present because I'm striving. Mm. I've gone into striving seeking mode, thinking that something or somebody is going to save this or make me feel better, which means that you're not present. Mm. So you can't, you can't actually try to be more present, you can, you, can, you can just notice it when you're not being present. Mm. There's no trying, because trying in itself, in and of itself, trying is a striving. Because if you try to do something, you can't do it. You try and pick up a pen. Most people, when I say that, they pick up the pen. No, that's not trying. That's picking up the pen. Try and pick up the pen. And feel the energy of that trying to pick up the pen. I'm trying to be present. There is a struggle in it. And presence isn't a struggle. Because presence is your essence. So when you're in presence, you're not striving. You're not seeking. You're not looking for anything outside of you in that moment. And then in another moment, you notice, ah, I've gone into striving. Sure, that's okay. I've gone into striving. I can bring myself back. So it's just the noticing. And it doesn't mean that you don't have a perception of time. It doesn't no. mean that you can't remember your past. And it doesn't mean that you can't envisage your future, that you can't have goals and set schedules for your life. You can, as long as you stand on a ground more real than future. If you stand on the ground of presence, of life, of fullness in this moment, then you can hold your goals lightly. Because whether they manifest or whether there's... Uh, whether life has another um, plan for you, it doesn't matter. It matters not what you achieve in life. It matters how you oh. achieve and or how you experience this moment. Are you successful in this moment? Or are you postponing your success to some future, some imagined future? Be successful now. And what is success? But to be actually aligned with the life that you are, with the joy you are. And we all come to, life, to, to this world with a life purpose, a primary purpose and a secondary purpose. Our primary purpose is all the same. It's to realize who and what we really are. That's the purpose. That's the, the wholeness that Michelle was speaking about earlier. To remember, to come back to wholeness. And wholeness is love. That's all of our life purposes. If you want to know what your primary life purpose is, to come back to the true essence of who and what you are which is love, which is life. Your secondary life purpose, I believe, will unfold naturally. And your secondary life purpose is whatever else you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. You know, what, you know, if you're a mother, well, that's your secondary life purpose right now. That's going to change. If you're a baker, well, that's your secondary purpose right now. And that's going to change. Your secondary purpose is always changing. Your primary purpose is never changing. So come back to love. How can I love more deeply in this present moment? By letting go of my attachment to time to to that which is in my head rather than that which is real in this moment love is a sense of oneness with the isness of life that's what love is the feeling of connection in this moment not some future imagined moment but now in this moment mm -hmm. that's our sacred that's our soul that's our only 
purpose on this earth to come back to the realization of love and as we realize it individually we realize it collectively because our individual awakening influences all the other aspects of ourselves which are the other eight billion human beings on earth they're all aspects of ourselves and as we awaken we make it easier for those around us to awaken now it's actually a gentle process it's not a it's not a judgmental process it's not a striving process mm. so if you if all of us can just imagine just stopping the struggle just stopping just stopping it so as soon as you go into the struggle and as soon as you go into the striving and as soon as you go into the seeking you just stop right there and you just open more to life you lean into life you say ah oh, life's giving us this okay Right, let's dance with this one. <laughs> and it might be a foxtrot or it might be a tango, you know, it might be a hip hop dance, because some of them are kind of crazy. But let's, let's see what this, how this unfolds. It's a, it's a much easier way of dealing with life than, than, than being kind of almost scared that the other shoe, when's the other shoe gonna drop? You know, you know sort of walking on eggshells in terms of what if I mess up and what if I make the wrong decision? What if you can't make the wrong decision? What if there is no such thing as a wrong decision? That you're here because you need to be here. That, the, that our purpose right now, John and my purpose right now, is to look at this funny little phone and speak to some people on this funny platform called pla Facebook right now. That's our purpose. And your purpose, if you're listening, is to be listening. That's it. And after this, your purpose might be to go make some tea. And then to go to sleep. What if we were to live our lives like that? Because that's being, that's being present. That's leaning into life. That's being, it's like intimate with life. That's what I'm sort of seeing. It's, it's, I want to become more intimate with life. I want to watch that leaf falling. And I want to notice that leaf. And notice the, the look in somebody's eye and see if I can lean into it, see if I can be softer with it. That's what this shift is about. Yeah. It's not about being harder on yourself and judging yourself more and shaming yourself more. It's not about that. It's about loving more. And that includes yourself. And yourself is life. Mm. To recognize it, to love life mm. more. Mm. And don't we yearn to dance with that which we love dance with life dance with presence and dancing isn't an outcome based no. activity it's the enjoyment of the step you're taking now treat life as a dance and enjoy the isness of just this step without needing it to take you somewhere else on the dance floor that's not the purpose well it would be a horrible dance if you were actually trying to get to the other side of the dance floor you know, you'd be stepping on each other's toes and you'd be mowing into each other and you wouldn't enjoy the dance. You wouldn't no. be listening to the music. You would just be trying to get across the dance floor. Whereas a dance is like, right, you're immersed. You're immersed. If you walk dancing with someone else, you're immersed in that other person's energy and you're moving together and the other person turns and you sense the turn and you, you turn with the other person. If, you, you, if you've got your own mission and the other person's got his own mission, you're not going to be dancing. You're going to be having a tug of war on the dance floor. And that's what's happening in our, in, our, in our communities, in our world. There's a tug of war. People are pulling in opposite directions. And this, this change in evolutionary consciousness, the shift in consciousness is to come back together and to actually move as one. Because we are one. As one humanity, not as separate. Oh, you can't speak to me because you're a different X, Y, Z. Oh, rubbish. We're all connected. Yeah, and just to say, because I know some of you are wondering about this, it's not that you can't use your mind. Your mind is an incredible tool. It's a, it's a preferential, judgmental tool. It's able to define up from down, cold from hot, etc. But it's meant to be used and not meant to use you. And I've said this many times before, most people don't even have a mind. The mind has them. In fact, they have no 
realization of self other than what the mind tells them they are. And that is a disconnection from life because you have time on the one side and time and mind are one and then you have presence, life, on the other. Life is non-dual, it's the all that is. And mind is about separation. I have a mind separate to your mind. I have a personality separate to your personality. My, my gender is different to your gender, for example. And we have that sense of separation. And that all comes from the thinking mind. Nothing wrong with it, it's great, it's part of the uh, earthly experience. But we're not meant to live in that mind. We're meant to have the mind, use the mind, use the mind for strategy, for, for planning, but you don't use it, you don't need it 95% of the time. You're able to step out of that and be in presence. Yeah. Yeah. And that's awakening. It's to realize that we have a choice and the choice is to step out of the matrix and to lead into life, to be one with life and to live from that space and then use your mind from that space to plan and strategize, but don't let the mind use you. And not to, for a minute, believe that you are the mind. So you have the thought and you think that's you. It's not. Something you have. It's a voice in the head that's chattering away like a roommate. Mm -hmm. And it's just to see it like that, oh, your ego is my roommate. <laughs> it's a loud, loud, noisy roommate. Okay, I'm not going to listen to that roommate right now. I'm going to actually shut the door. It's, it's, it's like that. It's just, I'm just going to tune that out because it's not actually helpful. Because <laughs> it's usually, there's usually a couple up there in the attic, a couple of roommates, it's not just one. Mm. And they're, t they're fighting each other. You, know, you should do this, but what if I did that? Now, maybe if you did that, but then what would happen then? You got a whole conversation going, and none of it's you. So it's because just to realize that that isn't who we yeah. are. Our thoughts do not define who we are. Our thoughts are not us. Underneath the thoughts, underneath all the chattering going on in your head, is stillness. That stillness is you. And how do I know that? Well, your thoughts come and go. But you don't. Underneath the thoughts, if, if your thoughts all subside, you're still there. You're still there. You are that stillness. You don't have to strive to find it. You don't have to improve it. You are that stillness. And that stillness is there irrespective of anything that your mind is telling you in this moment. And that's leading into life, is to trust that rather than the judgmental mind. You pulled some cards there. I have. So I'm going to take one for, for the meditation. Okay. Must I take one? You take one. Why don't you take one? Okay. Right. Here we go. Okay, let me pull a card. I'll pull that card. Blue. Blue is <laughs> my favorite color. That's why I pulled it. What does it say? Yeah, that's perfect. That's beautiful. I won't tell you what it is. Michelle will weave it into her meditation now and then I'll let you know what it is afterwards. Yeah. That's perfect. Oh, Thank you tonight and just to just to ask you if you have enjoyed what we have shared tonight, if you can just click the like button and share this. It really does help grow the the audience. Thank you. Yeah, and our inner space community, oh we've still got our journey to freedom we're still in our first week. So if you haven't joined and you still want to, you can. There's still time. So journeysofawakening.com um, I would suggest that everybody, if you have not joined our Journeys of Awakening WhatsApp group, please do that. Um, we'll put it in the link below. But you really need to join because we said in the beginning of this uh, satsang that we might be changing formats. And so we're going to be notifying people on our WhatsApp group because not a lot of people see our posts on Facebook. So we can't rely on that. So please just um, join the WhatsApp group, and that's where we just post our notifications for all our stuff. Yeah. And it's not a chattery group, it's just a broadcast group. And also, uh, Inner Space continues, and this month we're going to be looking at comfort zones and where we, where we get stuck, and what we need to release. So it's going to be a really yeah, strong Inner Space is our monthly um, support platform, online platform yeah. as well. It's all and on just, our website. Yeah, and just to go back to what we said right in the beginning, we're just reassessing, like we should all do from time to time to time, um, what we do and how we present. So we are looking at the satsangs and looking at the format and maybe changing the time slot or the, or the, uh, or the platform. platform. Yeah. So we need your input. 
We, yeah. We're very open. To, uh, we want your, your contribution to that and the questions we asked in the beginning. So if you haven't answered those yet in the comments, please let us have your feedback on that. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. You can lead us out yes. with a guided visualization. Just a short one. Yes. Okay, thank you. Let's just settle in, if you're not settled in already. And take a beautiful deep breath in. And then a releasing breath out. Take a deep uh, breath in for say four counts, all the way in. And then release the breath for six counts. So breathe out longer than you breathe in. Breathing in for four, and breathing all the air out for six, and releasing your shoulders, allowing your hands to soften wherever they may be, sending a wave of beautiful, soft light running all the way through your head, right down through your body into your feet, just relaxing and softening, releasing anything that you don't need in this moment through your feet, just allowing yourself to be fully present, to drop in to a very soft, silent place. Just imagine a feather drifting through the air, very gently drifting through the air, and then very gently landing on a perfectly calm pool of water. Just feel that, feel ah, oh. and then just allow yourself to float. You just be carried a little bit by the current, by the flow, no effort, just floating, just here, right now, no resistance, fully present for whatever might come. Allow this peace to sink deep into your being. Allow this peace to radiate through you. With each out breath, just soften more and release more and be here now. You might listen to the sounds in your environment. Listen really carefully. Now listen even more carefully to the sound of your own breath. Maybe to the sound of your own heartbeat. Feel this peace. The affirmation for tonight is I let go of emotional resistance and allow life to flow as it is. I let go of emotional resistance and allow life to flow as it is. And feel that. Feel that feather just drifting on the surface of a pond or a lake allowing with no resistance 
fully present. And now staying in this peaceful place, take a beautiful deep breath in and out. And that's it for the night. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. That was beautiful. Mm. That was beautiful. And how perfect is that affirmation? Good one. I let go of the emotional resistance and allow life to flow as it is. And this wasn't chosen um, beforehand, it was just randomly mm -hmm. picked out of the pack. Yeah. That's perfect. I'll photograph it and put it up on the Facebook page. Thank you for being with us tonight. If you enjoyed tonight, pre please press the share button. It really helps. Please do that. And yeah. we look forward to catching up with you uh, next week. But we'll just let you know what the format is going to be a change or whatever. Um, quite a number of you have... Uh, have said that the current format is, is working for you. But if anyone has some suggestions or comments, please add them, mm. because we do like to, to improve if we can. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Love, Love you, all. you all. Have a good week.